What's up everyone? I'm Pastor Lisa and this is Harvest Kids Online. I'm so glad you're here today for our last Sunday in May. You all really stuck around and finished what you started. See what I did there? Anyway, since it's the last week of the month, that means next week we'll be starting a brand new life app that we'll learn about all summer long. But before we get to that, we're not done with May just yet. So, can anybody tell me what our life app is for the month of May? What was that? It sounded like you were saying something, but I'm not completely sure. I'm gonna need to hear you say it again. I mean, by now, you should definitely know it. So I wanna hear you, okay? Are you ready? One, two, three. That's it, determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Can you say that with me? Determination, deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. All month we've been talking about how we can get unstuck from any situation. How? By trusting God and using determination. We've learned that we can keep going even when things seem impossible because God gives us what we need. Our determination shows others how much we trust God, even through tough, sticky situations. And speaking of sticky, have you ever wondered how many licks it takes to get to the center of a blow pop? You haven't? Well, I've tried to find the answer to that question for years, but I keep losing count. You know what? Today is the day. I'm gonna figure it out. So I'll get to work on that in just a minute and get back to you with an answer. But first, let's all stand to our feet and get ready to dance as we worship the Lord together.
It's me, Haley, and thanks for sticking with me all month. <laughs> Today, since that's our very last day of sticky scenarios, I figured what better way to wrap things up than with a little dessert. Ah, dessert? Wherefore art thou dessert? It's right here. Oh, it's all, everything's good. So I have chosen to go with an all American favorite. Drum roll, please. Uh, th th not that kind of drum roll up. Th that's okay, that's a <laughs> Rice Krispie Treats! Whoop, 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 whoop. Rice Krispies, marshmallows, yeah! I already got started on making it because I was just that excited. Ooh, gooey marshmallow goodness. I've already measured out and melted the butter and marshmallows. Shh. Mm. And now just to add the Rice Krispies. Here we go. Ooh, it's like cereal confetti. The best kind of confetti, because you can eat it. This month we've been learning a lot about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, we are learning about a man from Ethiopia who was determined to understand God's promises written in the Bible. And luckily, God sent someone to help him understand. Oh, but don't let me give away any spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> See you guys in a bit! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter eight, Verses 26 through 40. Philip, like his friend Stephen, was a Jesus follower. Both men had been chosen to help new believers who needed food or special care. At your service. 
But after Stephen was killed, the Jewish religious leaders became even more bold in hunting down people who followed Jesus. They were led by a young man named Saul. Go house to house, find these Jesus people and toss them in jail. Many of the new believers left Jerusalem and scattered, but everywhere they went, they shared the story of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He came to rescue all of us. Philip traveled to a town in Samaria where he told everyone about Jesus and even made sick people well through God's power. I can walk, look, I can dance, <laughs> praise God. Philip and the new believers in the city were filled with joy, but then an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip. Go south to the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Wait, what? Everything's going so well here. What good can I do in the desert? Still, Philip set out immediately. He was about to discover that he wasn't the only one with questions. Far to the south, on that very desert road, a man from Ethiopia was speeding along in his chariot, reading from a scroll. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Who's he? He who? The man was a high official in charge of everything owned by the Ethiopian queen. He believed in God and had chosen to become a Jew, even traveling for days to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. But still, he was filled with questions as he read from scripture. This prophet, Isaiah, I don't understand what he's saying. As Philip hiked along the road, he spotted the Ethiopian official's chariot ahead. God's spirit spoke to Philip. Go to that chariot. Stay near it. On my mark, get set. Philip ran until he came alongside the chariot, where the official was still absorbed in the words of Isaiah. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. <laughs> Do you understand what you're reading? The official's eyebrows shut up, and he nearly dropped the scroll. Stop the chariot! As the chariot slowed, the official peered down at Philip. How can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. I'm someone. Then come sit up here with me. Thank you. Show me where you're reading. Right here. He was led like a sheep to be killed, just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. The official frowned in concentration. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? He's talking about the one God has sent to rescue all of us. His name is Jesus. As the two men traveled along that hot, dusty road, Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how Jesus gave his life for each of us and, and was raised to life again. This, this, this is amazing. This changes everything. Ahead, the men could see a few lone palm trees. As they approached, sunlight flared off a clear pool of water. Look, water, what can stop me from being baptized? <laughs> Let's do it. Stop the chariot. Philip and the official climbed down from the chariot, and Philip led the man down into the water. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, praise God. Dripping wet and filled with joy, the two men came up out of the water. Philip, you would love Ethiopia. You really should. Philip? Philip? Philip had suddenly, completely disappeared. In fact, God's spirit had whisked him away. He's gone. Only God could have done that. Let's get a move on. I've got more reading to do. <laughs> the Ethiopian official went on his way, a changed man. And Philip found himself in the town of Azotus. Um, what just happened? Well, I'm sure there are more people around here who need to hear about Jesus. Both Philip and the Ethiopian official had continued to be faithful and seek God, even when they couldn't see the whole picture. And the story of Jesus continued to spread. I love Rice Krispie Squares, full of marshmallow and zero cat hair. Oops, except for that one. Mr. Fluffins, I told him not to get on the counter. I think that's it. Yep. Oh, hi. Hello again. Uh, I was just finishing up the dessert. See? 
Looks good, right? Almost as good as our story we just heard. I mean, wow. God is so awesome. Let's take a look at our timeline, shall we? Yay! In the Old Testament, God spoke to certain men called prophets to tell people what was to come. Isaiah was one of those prophets. He spoke about the coming of Jesus and what this promised savior would be like. When Jesus came to earth, he fulfilled every promise made by God. So when the Ethiopian man was reading the words of Isaiah, he was reading about Jesus, but he couldn't understand what Isaiah was talking about. It's a good thing God sent Philip to help him put all the pieces together. And it's a good thing the Ethiopian man wasn't afraid to ask questions. When he didn't understand what he was reading, he didn't let that stop him from reading or asking questions. He asked Philip to help him understand. That's important for us to do too. Questions, good questions. Questions going for one. Oh, we go in the back. Question number two. And oh, we got a third question right here. Don't be afraid to ask questions about God. If you don't understand something, just ask someone. Sometimes the answer won't be there right away, but still ask. Don't let what you don't understand keep you from having a relationship with God. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when you have questions. Well, it's been an awesome month with you guys. It's time for a little dessert celebration. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh! That was awesome! At first, Philip didn't understand why God wanted him to travel on that specific road, but he obeyed anyway and it soon became clear. The Ethiopian official had questions, but he didn't let that hold him back from searching to understand more about God. And this reminds me of our bottom line. Keep going even when you have questions. Just like the Ethiopian, we don't have to be afraid to ask questions about God either. God welcomes our questions and wants us to seek after Him. If you don't understand something you've heard or something you've read in the Bible, ask someone. Ask your parents, a friend, or another family member who's a believer. They can help you learn more about God as you get to know Him better and better. And remember, sometimes we might have a question that we can't find the answer to, like how many licks it takes to get to the center of a blow pop. I lost count. Again, I might never know the answer, but that's okay because it doesn't change the fact that blow pops are really good. And the same goes for God. Even though we may not figure out the answers to all our questions, we know that He is good. God is bigger than our questions. They don't surprise Him and they don't make Him angry. God will meet you right where you are. So now let's head into family time and use our parent guide to complete some fun activities to wrap up our life app for this month. And preschoolers, Ollie and his friends are waiting to share a special story just for you. So keep watching. I love you guys and I'll see you right back here at Harvest Kids Online next week.
time it is. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Ollie and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. We miss you at the Wonder Clubhouse. We miss you. Where could it be? Where could it be? Oh, hello friends, and welcome to the clubhouse. It's me, Lucy, and I'm really looking for something. We sold a ton of the world's best lemonade and collected a whole bunch of money, but we lost the money jar. Can you believe it? I'm so sad. I've got to find it. I've looked up, look, look, look. I've looked down, look, look, look. I've looked all around. Look, look, look. And I still can't find the money jar. I'm just not sure what happened to it. Ho, ho. It's Ollie. Hello, Lucy. Ho, ho. Looking all around, are you? Hi, Ollie. We collected lots of money to buy games for kids in the hospital, but I lost the money jar. I'm sorry to hear that you are blue. I've got the perfect story for you. Just listen up. Just follow me through. Ho, ho. Follow me through, follow me through hell. I've got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, hey there, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman. Have you seen my pocket watch? I always keep it right here. I had it this morning, but... Oh, what was that? You see it? In my other pocket. <gasps> well, looky there. Thanks, friends. It's the best feeling when you found something you lost, isn't it? In fact, I've got a story for you. Let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. Okay, so today's true story from the Bible is one Jesus told about a woman who had 10 coins. There they are. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, where's number 10? The lady counted again. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, number 10. The lady decided to look for the missing coin. Look, look, look. She turned on a lamp. Look, look, look. And swept the floor looking for her lost coin. Look, look. Look, do you see it anywhere? Shout out when you see it. There it is. She found it. She called all her friends and neighbors and said, celebrate with me. I found my lost coin. Let's count them all now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hooray! Jesus told this story because he wanted us to know that just like the coin was special to the lady, we are special to God. Let's celebrate! Woohoo! Everyone say, God loves me and I am special. Ready? One, two, three. God loves me and I am special. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who loves you? God loves me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves you? God loves me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story. It's all true. You are very special, and God loves you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? 
Wow, what a great story. God loves me and I'm special to God. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Let's celebrate. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. Romans 8.39 Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. Romans 8.39 yeah, yeah, yeah. I get scared sometimes So I cover my eyes But that's so silly Cause God is always with Get out of here, get out of here for 